Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at uh, Euro Linux. This will be the desktop version, and this will be 9.1s. Euro Linux is compatible with RHEL, also Oracle Linux, Rocky Linux, Alma Linux, because they all build from the same platform. Uh, and that being a fork of RHEL. Desktop environment for, in this particular case, is GNOME 40. So, yeah, it's back uh, a few releases, but you got to expect that when you're working with long-term support releases. The file system, by default, is XFS, but you can also choose EXT3, EXT4, or some other variant if you prefer as well. But those are the ones that are defaulted in the install. The init... Uh, system, of course, is System D. The kernel that you'll be installing with this release is the Linux kernel 5.14, and the default bash shell is 5.1.8. But where does it come from? So this is a, a Polish release that began development in 2013. Uh, Euro Linux is not is not only based on RHEL. It's also 100% compatible with RHEL as well as CentOS. The new releases for Euro Linux follow whatever RHEL does, you know, one business day later. Like RHEL, Euro Linux supports uh, runs for 10 years. So uh, this was, re I think 9.1 came out in June 2022. So yeah, so 10 years later it should be way down the road, 32, yeah, uh, 2032. Euro Linux uh, has two versions. There's a paid and a free version of the software. So it follows the same kind of model as RHEL, where you, except that you have three uh, different levels of support. There's basic, standard, and premium. So and those give you various levels, like basic is just online and phone support. And then standard offers, I think it's nine to five support five days a week. And then premium is seven days a week, 365 days a year. Yeah, if you're in a business environment, you're trying to get support for this at 3 a.m., now you know how to do it. Of course, the community-based ones is, is, you just, yeah, it's the forums, that's it. As far as the variations of it, there are two versions of the server, one's for x86, 64-based machines, and the other one is for ARM. So there's two server platforms. There's also two desktop platforms. Uh, same thing, x86 on one of them and ARM on the other. If, if you want to run this on Raspberry Pi, yep, it should work just fine on that as well. Uh, it does uh, also contains a batteries repository. It is uh, a repository which contains those packages that are used to construct the distribution, the Euro Linux distribution. So if you want to roll your own or you want to rebuild the distribution for some reason, you can do that using those repositories. Also, if you have a Gold Key subscription, you are entitled to create a new distribution, and that can be a fork of RHEL or Euro Linux. You can choose whichever one you prefer to use. System requirements, uh, you will need an x86-64. Uh, that can be Intel or AMD or you'll need an ARM 64-bit uh, platform as well. Uh, they say 4 gig of memory. However, uh, they recommend 1.6 gigabytes per core. Disk space, 10 gig. They do recommend 20. And then at a minimum, 1024 by 768 for your display. Uh, and I think that's fairly common today. Uh, although I wonder for how much longer, to be honest. The Linux kernel, as we said, was 5.14. That offers some improved support for AMD and Intel GPUs. It also has a CFS burst mode, which is for bursty CPU-bound applications. Core scheduling also offers safe hyper-threading, and of course that's uh, another patch to the, uh, <laughs> to the Spectre Meltdown. Uh, EXT4, if you're using that file system, it has uh, journal checkpoint features, which uh, allow you to roll back your file system to a certain checkpoint. As far as the changes on the desktop, some of them have to do with security. Euro Linux 9.1 introduces what they call Keylime. 
And that is a remote machine attestation tool. Open SSH now supports RSA key length minimums and they recommend 2048 RSA key lengths. Uh, NSS no longer supports RSA uh, keys shorter than 1023 bits. Linux kernel 514 is what we said. Uh, as far as the exact GNOME release of GNOME 40, it's 40.4.0. Firefox is 102.9, so that's pretty recent. Uh, Geary, uh, 43.0. LibreOffice is 7181, and uh, Cockpit is uh, also provided. That's uh, 276.1 is the version number for that. Uh, you'll notice, though, that there's a translucent dock that is at the bottom of the screen. Of course, you can reposition it if you want. But at the bottom of the screen, and that stores icons of your favorite applications or ones that are running. There's uh, also there, the status bar from the top of GNOME. It's been brought down in one place to the right, just similar to Windows. And uh, you'll notice a moon icon that's there. That allows you to flip the theme so you don't have to go and get, you know, tweaks and all that stuff if you... If you want to switch from light mode to dark mode on your applications, you can do that by just using the moon icon. I'm not going to go through an install, but we'll kind of kick the tires on it a little bit. Kind of, you know, see how it looks and how it feels. Uh, and, uh, yeah, go from there. Do our usual checks. First of all, let's see what we got for storage here. So we're using uh, about 8.8 .8 gig, and we got 20 available. So I've got the minimum that we need. Let's see how much memory we're taking. About one gig uh, at the moment. Let's see what Glances says. So total memory that's using is 1.27 gig. That includes, of course, the app caches. That leaves us about six gig free. Let's go ahead and run Linus. But we'll take a look. So, yeah, 67. So I haven't done much. If any, anything, I'm, I have not done much hardening on this at all. So it's probably going to tell me, oh, great, no warnings. But I am missing a firewall, I think. Yeah, this is all typical stuff. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about that. It is 514-162 for the exact uh, patch release of it, if you're interested. You know, you have, you do have kind of a more modern look to the icons, I think. And uh, I like this. I mean, that's pretty clear that those are bash scripts. This is running under Whalen. So that's going to do it for Euro Linux today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's go take a look at the benchmarks, though, before we leave. But I wanted to thank you for watching and hope to see you next time. And bye for now.